Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. In today's Kaizen Dental Success Stories podcast, we have with us Dr. Anand. His journey is unique because he has practiced dentistry across four different countries. That includes India, Philippines, Cambodia and Thailand. Dr. Anand Maria graduated from Seema Dental College and Hospital. He then shifted to Philippines to do his masters in orthodontics. He then took up his PhD in Thailand and is currently working in Cambodia. He is the head of orthodontics at the Faculty of Dentistry and is also the postgraduate guide and clinical professor at the International University. He has been awarded various fellowships including Pierre Fawcett Academy, the International College of Dentists and from International College of Continuing Dental Education. He has active research interests and has published more than 60 papers in high-impact peer-reviewed journals. He is also the adjunct faculty at Savita Dental College, Chennai. He has also lectured at various national and international conferences on topics of his interest. Hi, Dr. Anand. Your profiles were among the unique ones which I have ever visited. According to me, you are a dentist explorer. You are not just in India, Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia, and again back to India in a sense. So your journey is something which I wanted to bring forth in front of our audience. So thank you for taking out your time and coming here. It's my, my pleasure. So well, thank you so much for having me here and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. So my first question is after you did your BDS, there was a phase where you did your diploma in healthcare and hospital management. So were you thinking about quitting dentistry? Why was that done? Uh, well, I, I finished my BDS in 2008. So I, I, I think if you probably know about 13 years back, dentistry was still up and coming in India. So there were not many avenues for, uh, un, for newly graduated dentists to explore. So I just thought uh, I was working as a junior lecturer at that time in a dental school. And I just thought it might be good to have an alternate option. And so that, that's why that's one of the reasons why I took up a diploma in hospital and healthcare management. I, I thought even if even if I don't explore that avenue, uh, the knowledge that I acquire would serve me well some, somewhere down the line. That was one of the reasons why I took it up. So it was basically a backup option, which you never used. Yes, more or less. So no, it's it's it still helped me in my present capacity because I was uh, I I did that. So it's it, the things I learned there. It's it's helped me now more or less because okay. now I'm the head of orthodontics of a department. So you learn hospital organization. You learn different things when it comes to planning and management. So which serve you well now. So provided you remember all of it or you acquire knowledge like at a good uh, pace. It should, it, it knowledge never goes waste. So according to me, so whatever you learn it, it will help you somewhere down the line. Great. That's something which our audience needs to take up that what you learn, you can use it anytime in the future. You really don't know when it will come in handy. Uh, after you did that, you decided to go and do your masters in Philippines, masters in orthodontics. Why Philippines? Why not India? Uh, well, uh, see, uh, that, that was another uh, ambition of mine. I, I always wanted to study abroad. I wanted to gain education abroad, probably try to bring back some of the acquired skills back to India. That was the plan then. So uh, when the option came up, I was looking for options to do my master's abroad. Uh, so one of the reasons why I took up uh, master's in Philippines was that it was one of the few programs wherein you have a residency uh, because a lot of times, uh, when people are applying for masters abroad, they forget to look for whether a masters is by research or a masters is with an incorporated residency where you work hands-on on patients. So Philippines was one of the few places where you actually got to do research and you get to work hands-on on a lot of patients. Okay. So which which serves you well in the future? Plus, like we have, I, I knew I had some acquaintances who had already uh, gone through the program there. They gave me very good feedback. <laughs> on what I could learn and pick up there. So which is, I, I think I had a few options at that time, but then I decided to go ahead with this because my interests were always clinical. 
so i i decided to go ahead with this route and i think yeah that's how things materialized so how was the process to get into philippines for masters is it long is it easy how is it uh, not too difficult uh, i'm not sure how is it now uh, but you have to send in your documents for verification first uh, so provided they accept your uh, university uh, documentation uh, you need to send in your transcripts so provided they they would convert that transcript the the scores in those transcripts to gpa scores and provided you satisfy the university scores you also have to give in your english language exam to uh, demonstrate your english proficiency so is it toffel so you have to give yes okay so uh, once those requirements are done so they would give you a provisional acceptance letter and then you start apply going through the visa process which is not very really tedious uh, luckily like for indians i think it's very easy to get a student visa over there uh, but just you get a 6 month visa so i think that's something that you should know so you have to keep on getting it extended every 6 months so how long that's is the course 2 years 3 years how is it yes sorry 3 years it's the same 3 as years as the same as in india so it's a 3 year course so you yes, get extensions easily Uh, you get extensions very easily because uh, the university would provide you documents to get the visa extended uh, but the thing is that they are very strict with the requirements so one if your requirements are not completed within 3 years you still need to extend and stay beyond oh. so yeah so that especially with the research part and the requirements part uh, they're very strict so which is good in a way so because you're looking you're going there to gain education so i think you should uh comply with whatever they they ha- want you to do so is there a merit list basis they i take admissions if now if 10 people apply how do they decide is it interview based how does it work they have a limit on the intake uh, so they would not take more than I, i think at the time i entered we had about 10 students uh, we had students from uh, egypt we had students from nepal india and their own students so uh, they have a students to chairs ratio actually uh, plus the students to tutor ratio so as long as you satisfy the requirements and you complete the your you still within that ratio you would get admitted provided okay. your requirements are good understood so it's basically an application process and based on whether they feel you're fit or not they will select you accordingly yes yeah. yeah. so understood just, uh, at that point of time i'm not sure if they still have they used to have a university office in delhi so you're supposed to go there and get your documents verified in person only when, that is when the university goes ahead with the documentation process so i'm okay. not sure how is the now now it's been 10 years almost so i'm not sure how is the process now okay so what was the name of the university in philippines which year university of the east manila university of the east okay yes. so we'll put the link of the website in our instagram page so people who are interested can go and check out their website uh after that you after you did your mds for your masters in philippines you neither came back to india neither you settled out there you decided to go to cambodia the third country why so okay so that's uh, yeah so it was very interesting though uh, but i i finished my masters i came back to india i was just in india for about two or three months so when the option to join a university here came about so i had been talking to the dean for a couple of months already that i was very interested in taking up a teaching position so i've always been more interested in academics uh, i i'm clinically oriented but i i do like to be involved with academics a lot plus research so the dean had been talking to me and he told me that he would be very keen for me to get a position here so he saw my profile i had research publications during my masters so i was amongst the only residents to get a grant from the government where i was in philippines during my masters so i was one of the only residents to get a grant i have seen the number of oh researches God. you have done it's a long list yes <laughs> so yeah so that that is like another another thing that interests me a lot so when i spoke to the dean he was very keen for me to come here contribute to research uh, help set up the department here Uh, so because we i as i as i was just mentioning to you before we have an undergraduate department but we are heading towards starting post graduation uh, we are in the last steps of approval so that's what i've been busy with over the past few years like setting up the department adding to equipment 
gradually moving towards a step wherein we could start post graduation so i think uh, i had an offer from saudi uh, just just to since we are discussing the topic so yes. i had a financially financially sound offer from saudi arabia so i could have followed the conventional route but i, I think if you see my profile nothing's been conventional <laughs> yes so, with, so uh, i i usually go by what excites me so i thought this is a challenging thing you get to set up a department you get to contribute to somewhere uh, where uh, things are very, very basic so i i think i i took it up as a challenge and probably that's what kept me happy so far so how was the process to get into cambodia you did you have to give a licensure exam or something or how does it work how did it work in your case okay. so cambodia comes in the asian countries uh, so my masters was directly recognized here because uh, philippines is also in the list of asian countries uh, so i i submitted my documents here to the dental council and uh, so here the, pro, the the it's it's almost like the middle eastern countries so you actually have to find an employer first the employer would submit your documents initially to the dental council and they have to be approved by the dental council for you to practice here so once that is done Uh, you still have to get a work permit which is again through the employer so that is a bit of like the initial process is time consuming but the renewals are very easy so you need to get a work permit plus you need to have a specialist license here you uh, need to register with the dental council so that is all done through the employer normally so once that is done then you are able to work freely here so someone who is done masters in india cannot just directly go and give their degree out there because it doesn't come under that it has to go through the employer because you have to get a work permit so the work permit also has to be processed by an employer understood so the first important step is to find a job there and then only you can think about shifting to cambodia understood now this is the third country then when you decided to go in for your phd you went and did it in thailand why so uh, okay so again so something you know uh, there are two or three things which keep me moving on or motivated always so one is learning uh, getting more and more education research plus like clinical cases so these are things that excite me so i i did want to keep learning on so i i thought a phd is the natural next step after a masters uh, so since i was working here and thailand is nearby uh, so i took up my phd in oral biology from thammasat university which is one of the top most ranking universities in thailand Uh, and because of my research profile uh, they gave me i got a full scholarship from the thai government great so uh, so I, that's how things materialized again so i i told you like hard work does pay it's just that you have to be patient you can't be in a hurry you don't get instant success unless luck really favors you you have to keep working towards it i understood so uh, you did it in oral biology the your phd yes. so yes. is there any application Again, you're using for your ortho application as in has in do you use that research which you've done in your oral biology how do you use your so my, my topic uh, actually my topic is uh, skeletal uh, airway analysis across different skeletal malocclusions so okay. i i did a mix of both orthodontics and oral biology so because the topic was oral biology they gave me full freedom to explore orthodontics in relation to oral biology so that's great so that's something which interested you a lot yes so after you did your phd in the recent past you have again joined savita dental college as a faculty member so how come your circle completed you started from india went to philippines moved to cambodia then thailand for a short term and again back to india how did this journey materialize okay so uh, again when it comes to uh... you know it was just uh, my research profile is probably what attracted them uh, so they were very keen that i contribute to teaching and research in some way or the other and i think for me it was just like a chance to give back something to the country where i'm from so either ways it worked out for both parties so when they gave me an offer to join as an adjunct faculty uh, contribute to teaching sessions whenever i'm in india and also help bring up the research and contribute to the uh, academic research being done in the departments of orthodontics so I, i i couldn't say no so it was just something which again so i i mostly excited you what <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I mostly go by what interests me, what I'm, uh, whether it's something that I would want to do. And mostly I, I don't think twice on it then. Understood. Uh, so your journey has been unique. You always took what came next. You looked at all the options. Okay. Other than that, what is the best piece of advice you think which should be given to the young dentists who are graduating right now? Uh, okay. So I, I've often noticed that young, uh, the young graduates or the new fresh graduates, uh, they look at the salary very early. I, I can understand there may be financial problems or financial implications of it. Uh, but see, you're in a field where success rarely comes instantly. So you have to think in terms of what would happen after five years? What are my plans after 10 years? Uh, there is no shortcut to success. I've been saying that I think all over that. So I've been working towards it. I, I've worked hard to get to where I am and I'm still working hard. So the, I, I, I think that's the message I would probably give to the young graduates as well. Keep working hard, be patient. Things will like turn for the better. So I think that that's my message to them. Yeah. And like you keep your eyes wide open. Look at all the options up there. So, you know, there, there's lots. So you, you don't have to think in terms of just to join a dental college, just to work in a dental clinic. There are thousands of options. You could go for uh, hospital management. You could go into forensic odontology. You could take up a clinical branch. Uh, you could go into research full time. So you do, it's, it, your options are, are, are as limited as how you limit them. So I, I think there's, there's no shortage of options. It's just that you have to explore them. You have to spend time exploring them. So as you call me an explorer, so I, I, I think <laughs> I would encourage everyone to explore. So I can't guarantee it would be, uh, you know, 100% success, but I, I would, I'm sure hard work pays off sometime or the other. So you are bound to get success if you keep working hard. That was a very interesting session. And... I'm sure the people who have watched this would have learned a lot about how your journey was unique, how you took each and everything as it came, were not always tensed about the future, but kept taking the right decision at the right step. Thank you, Dr. Anand, for your fabulous time here. Please, thank you so much for having me. And I wish everyone watching this all the best for their career and future. Thank you. Thank you.